Hello everyone. I hope you are having a great day. I finished the transcript for February 6, 2022 Lightline USA. Of course, there was talk about the WTP, that is the wireless electricity to the world, it's coming soon and it's very amazing. We heard from Mackiewicz and Melchizedek, there was another attack on the planetary government. He is dealing with that. Heard from Universal Father, Michael of Nabodon, the Creator Son, and other Celestials, as well as we heard Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter speaking, and we must not forget Queen Elizabeth I and Vespasian, the Roman Emperor, they spoke. And he was from the day when Apostle Peter and Paul were living in Rome. So you don't want to miss that these are historical events. Also, and then Jesus spoke. There were talk about the second coming and much more. And I say to you that this is the only source I know where major planetary issues are discussed and coming right off the press live stream. Just always what Father is thinking and doing or want to do through us at the current time. I don't know any other program like this. You are welcome to join these meetings. It's so important that we are growing in numbers and in interest. It's important to Father because that is the connection to humans to actually bring forth the kingdom of God on earth. It comes one soul at a time, one heart at a time. So let it be your heart and your soul that joining us, you are welcome. You go on the website, seraforum.org, and find all the calling numbers to plug into the live telephone conference calling. You can go online for the streaming. And you can join by online internet audio connection. So please join us and thank you for listening. God bless you. Enjoy. Welcome everybody. This is Lightline Sunday USA for January, I beg your pardon, February the 6th, 2022. I'm Ron Besser, your host, and Phyllis Simpson, your co-host. And I am your MC, Ron. I am Tarkas. Welcome, Tarkas. Please help yourself. Thank you, Ron. I see the streaming is down, and I'm afraid it's permanently for the simple reason that the cabal removed most of the code. For that reason, Charles has to reset it up. For that reason, Charles is not going to be very happy. We can't protect everything, Ron. No, not at least one thing. <laughs> that was spoken to us in the Marantial. Ron is quite good at it. We now want to bring your attention uh, to something very important. Ron has been working with it all morning and has seen to it that Dominic, who has arrived at uh, his listening chair downstairs with Ron, also understands this. This morning, the cabal made every attempt to snuff out the planetary government. They didn't succeed. And primarily, it is with Ron, Machiavelli, and Melchizedek, and the light lines here that maintain a presence on Urantia that refuses to budge. Ron has made it clear that the streaming will be revived and it will work again regardless of the childish behavior of the cabal. For reasons of state, 
let me tell you this. The entire matter of a light line is now so seriously contemplated as very essential, not only for the missions, but also for the planetary prince, who will be Machiaventa Mechizedek without a change again. You've been told someone is or someone is no longer over the past two years. But finally, we have decided that only Machiaventa Mechizedek has enough power in his wrist to stop the foolishness, not only of Lucifer, but also of the mistaken seraphim and mother spirit. They insist on ruining anything you do wrong, and everything you do is still staying the course because he refuses to let the light lines die without one heck of a fight. You attending it are most helpful. Right now on the direct call, we have 21. We can't pick up the five who do not have the computer, but have a phone or other means to listen. For that reason, we lament losing the five, but Charles is going to have to figure out how to put the streaming back without causing further problems. And finally this. Ron did have a relapse, as Stephen had asked, but he is well on his way back to at least knocking back a little bit of the pain. For that reason, he and Dominic are going to talk about pain release. Dominic is not bothered, but Ron is. But Dominic should know how spirit releases pain, and we will talk about it. I'm sorry for the stoppage there. Uh, welcome to the Internet audio for whoever joined just now. The truth of the matter is, Ron, without the Internet audio, you would lose your outside audience because the number you advertise doesn't always work. However, if they would open the USA Light Line category, it lists most countries and the calling number for each country. We can't help you further. They will work. Now this, the truth of the matter is that the entire light line for Sunday is now under the control of the ancients of days. They want you to know, Ron, that your little talk with them this morning was most effective. They understand what you're under and are refusing to let the cabal win anything today. The code for the streaming is destroyed. You can't even open it. But the truth of the matter is the audio internet is working just fine and we can use it. Now this. <clears throat> Ron waits for a circuit clearance. The silence is silence he hears. We are being very careful not to supply 
the insurrection with information they can use against you, Ron, or against us and the planetary government. <clears throat> we want it to be understood that those of you who are joining slightly late have a good reason for being late, and we welcome you. For other reasons, the Internet audio is being effective, and that's all we care about. We now have, I believe, 23, 24 on the direct call. That is a good number. Now this. Here is... Michael of Nebadon, one moment. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. I'm waiting for clearance. Just a minute. Good. Go ahead, Michael, please. Welcome. Thank you. We have slowed things way down, as you can hear. What I have to say is important. Try to listen with all your ears this time and listen carefully. The missions will start, as you were informed on Saturday and earlier, when the patent process for the wireless transmission of electricity off a tower is awarded to Ron and he receives it to at least record it so he can post the important part of it to the discussion form and you can see the patent number on it. For those of you who want to know depth of detail, Look at the number, record the number, go to the U.S. Patent Office and enter the number where it allows you to see a patent. That patent will come up 100% for you. That's why Ron was sure that the only way to convince people he was serious was to patent it. And now this, the U.S. Patent Office has sent it to the attorney, Ron, Attorney Ream in Ottawa, Kansas. For that reason, the attorney probably will send it to you in the next three days. He wants to check it and make sure they have issued it according to his direction. When it arrives in your mailbox or your email, Ron, it signals the actual advent of the magisterial missions in a visible form. Do not be surprised if a distinguished gentleman is standing on your back porch ringing your doorbell to come in, we won't say who. No, he doesn't have two heads, Ron. Well, then I know it's an incarnation. Right. <laughs> Certainly you do. <laughs> now this. The truth of the matter is, Ron, you do that to spread the comfort level because it doesn't concern you one iota. Not whatsoever. I've been worse through worse just waiting for this. I can't wait to finish it. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. I am racing. I must have a say to all of you. 
the trial that we have afforded to Ron in particular is so unusual that the temperature around Urantia with interest has raised a full three degrees. I don't know when the last time was that we showed Ron the purple haze that I am. Actually, it's a beautiful violet that has overtones of a blue flame. Oh, it's lovely, Ron. And that's the color I'm getting in my eye. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, is that lilac. <laughs> yes. And purple, very purple. Yes. That's my staff, Ron. It's a slightly different variation, but a slightly different tone. Thank you. And that is the Christian dove I'm being presented with in my eye. As you often see, flying straight down with the wings to its side. That's particularly true of one of the churches, I believe. That is, Ron, but you don't know which one. I don't remember. No, I've seen it often enough, though. Yes. It's the Episcopalian Church, Ron. Ah, okay. Why would we present that? Well, it might be Queen Elizabeth I. Oh, my God, Ron, how do you do that? I don't know, but that is what is lodging in my speech center. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Tudor Queen of England, Elizabeth I. I am your majesty to you, Ron. By all means, majesty. I thank you. And this. When my father divorced himself from the Pope, we formed the Anglican Church. Most of you don't know that. Ron is quite familiar with it. He's even had services in the Episcopalian Church. For that reason, he has a somber notice. My sister, Queen Elizabeth II, I'm sorry to tell you, will pass within this year. She's had it. She's tired of it. Philip is gone. She loved the man endearingly and fully and always, as did Philip for her. What I have to tell you is that the majesty of the monarchy of England will not stand with Charles. Charles will insist on Camilla, and Charles will be barred from rulership. This is Ron, everybody. We now have the cabal speaking. Let me pull it back to the true speaker. Thought adjuster, may I have your affirmation, please? Thank you, Ron. My affirmation is this to all of you. Ron now recognizes it as a ruse. Elizabeth I is indeed speaking, but those are not her words. That is the cabal. Be careful when you transmit. If the transmission does not make sense and is counter, to what you have learned in the past year. Call 
call it for what it is, an evil duck, and get rid of it. Majesty, if you can continue, please do so. I can, Ron. Thank you. I love the term. You don't have to use it, but you're particularly fond of if you do. By all means, your grace, your highness. Thank you. I tingle. <laughs> A pale blue, I see. <laughs> yes, Ron, and more. And this. You heard me called your grace in the historic dramas. Yes. I think it's a lovely term. I do too. And I particularly like it for now. Let me reiterate what I was trying to tell you before the cabal got in. It's this. Ron properly did what is necessary when you're invaded by a bad transmission. Immediately break it off and ask your adjuster what you are experiencing. He will tell you. And go on from there. Don't stop transmitting. Now this. Elizabeth I is here to tell you, Ron, that her wish for England to have a monarch remains. But there's problems afoot with Charles over Camilla again. Another Charles, yes, exactly. And this time it's not Baltimore, correct. He is insisting that Camilla be queen. The monarchy is now turned to a single individual. There are no kings or queens to the major ruler. There is no constitution, so it is not written. But the people are not going to allow it, particularly with the history of Diana. That's number one. Number two. You think William is prepared. I think he is the stock to be the monarch. I do too. But the stock to be the monarch, William, is afraid of his father and what he might do to prevent him ascending the throne. I'm having a problem with this again, Elizabeth. One moment, please. We fully agree this is the adjuster. And your grace, we remove you for the moment. Please understand, we do. This is Michael of Nevadon, Ron. We tried it and failed. We dare not do that at the moment. I am Michael. This is the truth. Stay within your own groups insofar as your understanding of revelation. You know what has happened. We have experienced a seraphic insurrection and now a return of the Lucifer rebellion and the combination is lethal to your planetary government. Machiavento Machizedek will no longer tolerate the presence of either and will insist that Urantia be cleared totally. The Trinity has complied, and for that reason, Ron, you will find that the entire matter of the Paradise Trinity, Emmanuel, the ambassador, and that you are fully informed that the entire matter of the Urantia planetary government is a necessary concern of yours and that you will attend to it as best you can, being rather deaf, dumb, and blind as a human. For that reason, 
There is one star afforded which you see. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I love it. Yes, go ahead, please. The truth of the matter is you see it as an approval rating out of five. Right. You've got one. <laughs> All right, I've got one. No one has any except you. And for that reason, you are going to be informed about planetary affairs endlessly for what you might be able to do to adjust, for example, light lines or other material you must put out under the Magisterial Foundation or the Rayson Corporation. For the rest of them, we're just letting it sit for now. It's enough to get the money in and to start going. Everyone, WTP is solidly ready to go. The patent will arrive this week, and Ron will make amends with what follows. Furthermore, we are going to ask if Phyllis can take a transmission. Phyllis, can you hear me? Yes, Ron. According to my dashboard, we are not muted. What does your dashboard show? Uh, no, we're not. Oh, you mean the, the all of the callers? Everyone is muted according to my dashboard except for yourself and I. Okay, mine doesn't show it, but and it doesn't matter. Uh, are you able to take a transmission from Michael? I just put a lozenge in my mouth, so hopefully my voice will work on it. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. I've got to step away from the computer briefly. Okay. <clears throat> All right, go ahead when you're ready. <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> I'm just going to center it. Give my voice a second. To... <sighs> Thank you, Phyllis. Yes, this is your father, Michael. Of Nebadon, everyone, and as you can see, the cabal has done a good job on messing everything up with the streaming. And thank you to all of those who have joined us today regarding uh, the link from the main page on the forum, which says Internet Audio Lightline. That function is working just for those information in case you are in such a situation yourselves if you're unable to call in. As MacAventa said earlier, there was another attack this morning on the planetary government and it was not a successful one as per their intentions and as per our motivations those who are assigned with me here and with the Melchizedek group. We have been successful in fending them off once again. And that is to our credit, but also greatly to their detriment as they are signing their own warrant for capture and if this keeps up, it could very well be elimination. That, of course, is in the hands of the Ancients of Days, who have certainly been overwhelmed with this issue. 
on an ongoing basis. It is difficult for myself as a creator son to watch this continuous conspiracy and detrimental descent of my creatures, the seraphim, etc., to see them causing such great harm to themselves, yes, of course, to your rancha and those who are here for the Father's will. But the confusion and this distortion of truth within themselves and their beings and the distortion and the disruption of their purposes and their understanding of who they are has been so undermined. We truly question whether rehabilitation will ever work for the root cause of their rebellion and insurgence is difficult for those of us fully committed to the will of the Father to understand and a difficult pill to swallow for myself as their creator son. And yet we must move onward and forward and trust in the Father's guidance and direction and those he has put in place to deal with things and all of the changes and all of the new factors and entities that are being instituted to work in this new universe age. Of course, as with anything new, there is quite often and most often a time of great adjustment and realignment. And this is part of the working influence on this situation as well. And I thank all of you for being here to be kept abreast of the information we can give you to enable you to continue on your quest to know and to do the will and the ways of the Father as it is continuously revealed to you by your loving and faithful adjusters. One moment. Thank you, Phyllis. You can give this back to Ron now. Thank you, Father Michael. <clears throat> Ron, I, I'm asking if you are there to uh, continue. Perhaps Ron is still away from his desk. Okay, this is Phyllis. I'm going to uh, forgive me for my distraction. I've been trying all this time to get the streaming to become active. And it's telling me at the moment that the stream has finally started up. And we have one listener, so thank you for that. Thank you for those who've uh, been working on getting the streaming back up. That's wonderful news. Yes, I see it is now showing two via streaming. Welcome to you. Ron, is that you? 
I thought I heard. I thought I heard someone else on the line. Just wanted to let Ron know if he was back that the streaming is working and it is showing to the listeners at the moment. The connection is holding for now. Okay, this is Phyllis. I'm going to ask uh, Tarkis, uh, who you have in line here. One second, I'm waiting for Lucas. Hmm. And the streaming has gone off again. Well, it worked for a minute. That's unfortunate. But sort of encouraging that it was working for a short time. Marcus, have you someone there for us to receive a message from? Yes, Phyllis, this is Amadon. And I'm popping in here just for a moment. You hear from me quite often, a lot through Lemuel and through Amethyst. But I like to pop into these U.S. Daylight Lines once in a while. My main motivation is encouragement. Because you as mortals and myself as a formal, former mortal on your planet, Urantia, working closely with Van during the rebellion, I want to come to you all and just let you know how very proud I am of you for your continued persistence in being a part of the Father's will on this planet and being ready to pivot at a moment's notice regarding all of the changes that at times come to you so quickly Bravo to you, working as soldiers in the Father's Army for His will and His ways on your rancha, listening to your Commander-in-Chief through his adjuster telling you this is the way. I commend all of you, and I look forward at a point in time In the future, should we have the opportunity to become acquainted during your Ascension careers? And that is myself, Amadon, signing off for today and welcoming back your host, Ron Besser, to this call. Thank you, Amadon, for popping in. And Ron, the streaming came on and it looks like it's back on again and we currently have three listeners oh for heaven's sakes so who knows uh, I, I had pretty much stopped and then I thought well I'll give it a click because <laughs> I no, have been I just hit the streaming to yes all of a sudden I've got the menu well 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 yeah. thank you everybody and in particular, that which made it possible. Absolutely. You're welcome. I just clicked myself off. <laughs> <laughs> i got to be careful with this clicker. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Phyllis. Uh, let me pick up where you left off. Please. This is Amadon, Ron. Well, thank you, Amadon. Go ahead, please. I want you to understand that you are deeply under the cabal at the moment. They think they have you under control, but they don't. You are quite capable of showing exactly where you stand and why they can't get control. 
<clears throat> you asked Amethyst in particular last Wednesday to be especially careful about how she transmits certain issues. Well, she can't tell the difference. There is no way for her to tell the difference, but you can. So let me address something for you. The entire matter of WTP is now so politically distraught, not on Urantia, but up here. And the reason it is, we have provided the technology through a human to be used on a human planet. That is so rare, it has happened only twice before, and twice before it did not work well. For you, though, Ron, you have enough background information to make it stick and work. They know you for being able to speak frankly, and you speak frankly now. The truth of the matter is that the cabal is no longer functioning well, not because of you, <laughs> but because of Michael, Machiaventa, and you have provided a solid face they cannot penetrate. For that reason, the cabal is ready to leave, and we can't provide a dictation to tell you how. But shortly you may feel a freedom you haven't felt for years. And you look forward to that. I sure do. Thank you, Amadon. I am fully aware that you can speak, but hold it back now. The truth of the matter is you fully understand now. I do. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I beg your pardon, folks. <laughs> Let me get back on the horse here just a minute. <laughs> you absolute idiot, Ron. Thank you. The truth of the matter is, even if you say thank you, you are working against what I want done. I need to have it clear for a moment in order that I can make sure that we have clear channel. Now, it is so ordered. It is now in place. And we go. It's this. WTP is going to hit the fan like a bushel basket of you-know-what. <laughs> yes, you and Jiminy Cricket looking at the star with WTP written on it. <laughs> For reasons of state, copyright is acknowledged. In any case, let it be known that WTP will grab the world by the throat like new air for a gasping man. All of a sudden, it settles certain generic national state problems so well, Russia can go jump off a long pier or a short one, whatever they find. The truth of the matter is that the pipeline from Russia to Germany is a hotly contested issue, but it won't be in about three months. We are going to make sure that Germany gets a tower and is able to broadcast to all of its states one of which your ancestors are from. Yes, it's called Hess. The Bavarian state is next to it in southern Germany. But Hesse is where I'm from, as my great-great-grandparents. Thank you. 
what an interesting knowledge you have, Ron. And what ship did they come over on? The three-masted half moon in 1878. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? And why do you know that? I saw the Besser history at some point, and it was told to me. I know nothing more, I assure you. It's pretty much a blank. Thank you. And this is your great-great-great-grandfather, Bill Besser. Well, hello, Bill Besser. You're most welcome. Thank you, Ron Besser, my great-great-great-grandson. Stop it. I am well advanced up here. I do not have a store or a Maxwell. I do have conveyance, and that's because I like to travel inside something rather than float through something. All right. Sounds like a besser. <laughs> yes. You are one of the few I saw come out of that huge family we started off that now has a chance to make the Besser name very well known. In Germany, we were cold stock. That is, we had stores and sold goods. We have always been businessmen. You have been a businessman. Your father, Edward, my great-grandson, was a businessman. Together, all three of us make the bulwark of what it means to be a Besser. But you have improved on it somehow. <laughs> yes, great-great-grandfather Besser. <laughs> I stepped in it. Please go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that your heart for everyone, is truly the heart of all of us. It carries everywhere, it is everywhere, and it means a great deal to me that you care so much. Now this, I am not assigned to speak further, but I will say this. As my great-great-grandson, I look forward to the day you arrive in your own Maxwell, and I will see to it that you get a videotape of my day when I learned to drive. They opened the barn for me to park in it, and I drove straight through the barn, out the back wall, into the hog pens. <laughs> in your new Maxwell it was a 194. I thought you were up to date. Thank you, great great grandfather Besser. <laughs> you are as fun as I thought you might be. I retreat. <laughs> How's the injury? It's fine, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks, my past visited me. <laughs> And there you have more than even I knew at times. The truth of the matter is, Ron, the mansion worlds are going to open back up to you. You have met several famous people over the past few days you never make mention of. You don't want to drop names. No, I don't. The truth of the matter is one of them in particular wants to talk to you. I am Machiavella. <laughs> Chain sex, did you, Mekizadek? <laughs> Machiavella, Mekizadek. <laughs> Not the German chief statesman. That's where I thought we were going with this. Yes. In any case. <laughs> Let me gather myself. The truth of the matter is we have managed to do a light line with you missing a good 10 minutes of it. 
and that is well taken care of. I hope so. (laughs) The truth of the matter is the cabal is vicious, and they pulled another one on you. Yes. Uh, My sinuses, my dizziness, and everything else that goes with it, I thought I was going to pass out, and I had to make sure we were still rational. Uh, And thank God for Phyllis. Thank you. Now this. I am Machiavelli-Mekizadek. You have on your screen a dashboard that's up to date but refuses to show muting. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. It does refuse to show muting for the simple reason that the thought adjusters are listening in particular. Ah, no red horn for them. (laughs) That's right. Now this, to thought adjusters. Ron's thought adjuster is kind of the hub of a lot of what we are doing. The truth of the matter is the hub of Dominic and the hub of Phyllis all work with the major hub that Ron's adjuster is. He depends on them to understand him well enough, even if upset with him, to understand why he was forced to do something. Now we're going to tell you that the adjuster of Ron is still remaining the hub, but that we are going to use the Dominic hub more than we have. And that's because Dominic suddenly learned today the truth of the matter, that if he isn't watching, he could get into trouble. He now knows how to watch, and he will, and no more of that. But the truth of the matter is Ron needs an additional fortification so that when you-know-who is busy, another you-know-who can fit in. That individual is being secured, we hope, in a little while. But until that happens, the hubs of Dominic, Phyllis, Ron, and often Amethyst are going to stay into place and direct the human effort for the second return. It is to the second return we now turn to. This is Michael. This is Michael. Thank you, Ron. The second return is genuinely that. The bestowal son, Jesus of Nazareth, is here already. He's been on Urantia for six weeks, in and out of the flesh. You forget it. And it's costly to you. The truth of the matter is the cabal knows the presence and whereabout of Jesus, but refuses to attend for the simple reason Jesus is apt to hiss at their approach, as any good snake would do if their destruction was intended by some forest Goliath. Now, we have inadvertently used the rattlesnake as a personification of Jesus. Wipe that from your minds. But the defense is as lethal. Know that. For reasons that Ron knows not, 
he has been in a misery for the past 48 hours. Truly. He almost fainted when he had Phyllis take over. That's past. He's fine right now. It passed. But we dare not have a spokesman for the return of Christ or for establishing the technological miracle he has before the high congresses of the United States. He will testify. They will be delighted and enjoy the day with him. They may get to the bottom of what is going on with this planet. Furthermore, he has a load to tell the Congress what causes global warning. We save that. The truth of the matter is that he is connected to the center of all sciences and beyond mathematics into cause and effect. Any one of you would love to be able to, to participate with, but cannot unless maybe if Dominic is lucky, he can pick it up too and Ron can show him how. This is Dominic's adjuster. Dominic Orbeck. Ron has chosen to stand in primarily because Dominic chose to arrive in York at a very critical time for Ron himself. He needs support because the energy draw on him is so extreme and the ill health so poorly conducted by his own body that there is almost nothing he can do to help himself out. For that reason, we welcome Dominic wholeheartedly and we'll share with him some of the power. You know the consequences, Dominic. You're well advised. Fully, Stephen, don't bother coming too soon to York until there is money available for the building of the WTP. Enjoy your time in Louisiana until it is essential you are here to help carry the burden Ron must carry. That may not be June. That can be April or the end of March. We don't know yet. Furthermore, let it be known that the second return embraces Ron in particular. Ron knows and speaks with Peter almost daily. They chuckle with each other and see to each other's concerns. You see, Peter, I feel the essence of Peter and I see a form. He is being quite shy. <laughs> this is Peter the Apostle. I greet you all and to you, Ron. Thank you, Peter. Most welcome. Thank you, Ron. The truth of the matter is I was not originally the leadership of the Apostles. But when Ron came along for the second return, I saw how incomplete I was as the chief of apostles. Ron does not eschew 
the leadership. He rather wish others would take it. But he has one thing in common with Peter. The midwares never speak to it because they didn't know it. But Peter, the leader of the apostles, was fused by his adjuster as he sat sitting on the ground the day of ordination. That is in almost the first paper where Jesus chooses his apostles. There is a collateral event. When Jesus decided to return, Ron was living in New York in an old forest, hundred-year-old hemlocks all around him. The sun could hardly light the building he lived in, which sat on the shore of a deep, clear pond. So far, you could row and row for over an hour and not get to the other bank. They still call it a pond. Much to his surprise, he was fused. Not just the adjuster coming out. He had no concept of fusion when it happened. That adjuster started a daylight dream. Ron says he never wants to repeat it again. But the dream played out in motion in his open eyes. And he was forced to be a soldier, first with the blue uniforms and then with the red uniforms, and then bayoneted to death. That was the horrible dream. He thought himself insane. He called his brother 150 miles away at midnight. They got out of bed and said, sure, come on down and fully decided they had to put him in a net when it got there. Nobody knows this story except Ron. Ron ran the New Jersey Turnpike at 90 miles an hour and got home in record time. Just about daybreak. Daybreak the next morning The lady of the house puts him into the spare bedroom. He can't sleep because of the racket in his head and the pictures that kept flowing. He couldn't sleep. And about 8 o'clock, they both left for work. He got up and sat in a bench far down the yard under a willow tree. And there he sat for six hours, waiting for the fusion to finalize and end his life. He had a tape recording so that the effects of the estate could be understood to his brother if he died or just disappeared. He buried it under the mulch, under the back porch. Later that day when they returned and prepared supper, he dug it back out and put it in his pocket. Obviously, he was going home if he could stay awake to get home. He never tells that story. 
It's too insane. But when he tells you he has stood on the divide and has paid the price of what it is to expire before God as a human and become a messenger, that's one of the experiences none of you will ever tolerate or ever undergo. There's only one other person that you know in history who has done that. And that is Paul of Tarsus. Paul was thrown from his horse. The horse was a black mare and was full grown and quite a large horse. Paul called him Thades or her. Thades rose up almost perpendicular to the ground over an internal scare we promoted. It threw Paul from the horse. He fell to the right of the horse, and then the horse fell on him. It broke his ribs and cracked his femur in his left leg. Paul retrieved the horse when the head of the camel train came over to help. He pulled Paul up, helped him back on Thades, and then drove to Damascus. There, Paul was supposed to forced them to leave Damascus and he was to take all of their wealth and give it to Caesar. Instead, they took care of him. They lovingly saw to it that he could walk with his ribs busted they bound his leg, and it took two months for him to be able to ride Thades again. He went back to Rome. The emperor looked at him and the ragtag that he was and said, Paul, you're doing me no good. You're fired. That was when Paul of Tarsus said, if he used the vernacular today, it's unprintable, but said, so be it. Here's the universal father. I saw Paul that day fall under the horse and I thought he was crushed, but he survived well enough to take the ladies of mercy the Jewish women he was sent to destroy and remove from Damascus, along with her husband, tradesmen. He now saw the world so differently that he could not harm a hair on goodwill and accept the jaundice of Caesar, Tiberius. For that reason, Paul returned home, bound his wounds once more, and took his black steed to Rome once more. There he met Peter, and he and Peter were natural businessmen for the Father's work. 
they made one terrific error. To make sure that the new church, the Vatican, that Peter founded, had enough income to at least have oil for the lamps inside, they sold manure to the farmers around Rome. Well, lo and behold, they took delivery of a full wagon of manure and that damn fool dropped it right on the steps of the temple to Minerva. The word gets back to Vespasian. They did what? Yes, sir. They dispatched Minerva The prophets say so. She demands respect and punishment. The emperor dispatched Paul on a cross. They dispatched Peter on a cross. But for those of you who do not remember... Paul said to his executioners, put the damn cross up, but you better hang me upside down. And Ron quipped, that was so Paul could bite the knees of the soldiers. Anyhow, That's the story of Paul at his end on physical earth. I am the father, and I love Ron for being able to look at things with motivations that maybe were or were not in the minds of those who had such catastrophes. Lady Godiva was burned at the stake She got off her horse, stark naked, got up to the pile of lumber assembled under a cross and said, take me. (laughs) You can imagine what the executioner was torn by. This is Ron, barely. Stop it. Now, this. For those of you who do not know the stories of the Bible, Ron is not a good teacher. He doesn't even like the Bible, but reads it because of so much history is there if you can read between the lines. In any case, here is Paul to speak of what is coming to Urantia, Ron's involvement, and bilateral association, the planning commission, which will be a board of directors, will too, and all of you listening today will have a part somehow. I'm Paul of Tarsus, and I'm rather surprised I'm here I'm looking at Ron holding on to his right pocket with a lump in it, wondering what he had in it. You think it's a finger? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) this is Paul. Ron. We speak for a little over our time, but I think this is important for all of you to hear. Ron and I hit it off so well. We laughed together in spite of the seriousness that must accrue around the subject. I fell off my horse. Ron's calling it Thades. It's very close. It's not exact. In any case, He crushed a rib, and I was in 
extreme pain. If you ever break a rib, you know what it feels like. In any case, the horse and I were fine until the horse died of natural causes. He wasn't 400 years old, Ron. That's right. (laughs) In any case, the mistake that Peter and I made with the sale of manure and dropping it off at the temple of Minerva wasn't our fault. That was a peasant who knew nothing about temples or why it was such white marble. He thought it was a good place to put it. In any case, the emperor was very, very unhappy. Like a mayor almost, he was taking the heat of the community nonstop. He had to send a legion of soldiers to clean it up. And it was not sent back to the church, thank you. It was disposed of in a pig trough. In any case, that part of it ended. But Vespasian was sick to his mind that he dispatched the two best friends he ever had. This is Emperor Vespasian speaking. Ron, you know me very well. Yes, sir, I do. And you're a chief. That's right, Ron. I am chief of all adjusters, not, but of the final lighters all on Urantia. Urantia now has two final lighter companies, over 2,200 individuals. They are preparing for the second return, and for that reason, they must be discreet to the point of silence. I am Vespasian, and Ron loves me in spite of what I did as emperor. He calls me Papa at times. I am. He saw my rule in Rome as extraordinarily difficult, and it was because I shared power with my brother, who became a fellow emperor further east. We didn't have problems with each other. But those under us, the citizens, made sure we nearly came to war at least three times. I did not need Paul and Peter dumping manure on our favorite goddess. (laughs) It's breathtaking Vespasian. Yes. (laughs) I was so vexed when those two appeared before me. And I said to Peter, do you know what you did? Now I've got a small insurrection on the streets of Rome That is totally unnecessary. And Paul quips, and where else could we put it, sir? The palace? (laughs) That did it. That did it. Okay, rapscallions. Your tongues will hang in your mouth, but they will no longer speak. You will die by execution on the cross. That was our favorite way then. Paul was downhearted, but Peter thought, well, finally I get to see Jesus. Wrong. But then I know history after their departure, even after my departure, because... I was accepted fully by Paul and Peter 
when I arrived on the mansion worlds, and they said to me, you guard the gate of the kingdom, Vespasian. And that was Peter. Peter had the gate. You know the story in your church. St. Peter will not let me in unless I'm good. And there's a gate. Well, St. Peter lets everybody in, really. Now, the truth is this. Ron, I've had my fun. I'm turning this back over to Michael of Nevedon. We thank you, Vespasian, emperor and king of Urantia with final lighters today. We're thankful. Thank you, Ron. I don't like that. Stuff it. <laughs> well, Paul, my angst has boiled over. <laughs> but I'm okay now. Flowers are beginning to grow again on me. <laughs> That's nice to know. This is Vespasian. I'm not angry. Neither am I, Vespasian. You're still Papa. Thank you. The truth of the matter is you feel that way about Machiaventa. Yes, I do. They're grandfathers. Thank you. Oh, how nice. This is Jesus before they lose me. <laughs> All right. I will tell you this. All of you, when you speak through Ron from this side to that side, you never quite know where it's going to take you. I often have never had conversations with God the Father for weeks. But when Ron starts interviewing me, I do. And that's because He's in a, a live electric wire to the reality you are about to experience. The truth of the matter is that the light line today is well supplied with listeners, but we wish the rest of the world could hear it. Of course, vocabulary is going to be difficult for him, for them, because it involves revelation they do not have language for. But I assure you, they will have language for it when I am resident and ensconced in place as a second return. I still can't tell you. But I will tell you this, no one is going to get up my nose like Vespasian did with Paul and Peter. This time the shoe is on the other foot. I assure you, they can't touch me. I don't know what's going to happen to Donald Trump. I don't know what's going to happen to President Biden. But I assure you this. The people of Urantia will benefit first. The elite will be protected. But at the same time, they will not rule. You watch. I say goodbye to you, Ron, briefly. And goodbye to the rest of you. For we're going to close this light line now. Go ahead, Ron, close it down. All right. Since I don't show it being unmuted, but I will attempt to unmute. And we Thank end you, Ron. Thank you, Thank you, Philip. Oh.